That's better. Hello, everybody. I'm Joe Vito with American Songwriter, and today we're at the Gibson Garage here in Nashville, Tennessee, and joining us is the iconic songwriter, Rodney Crowell. We are so excited to be speaking with you today, Rodney, especially ahead of your new record, Triage. You started working on the record in 2019, which is where I want to start. My good friend, Joe Henry, songwriter, producer, who I've made a few records with, was dealing with a health crisis, and he was dealing with it in a, in a very poetic way. You know, it's very open, vulnerable. And I was down in the Caribbean with my wife and had an empty notebook, so I just started writing verses. I didn't have an instrument with me, and I was just filling this book with verse, trying to understand where it was all going. And I started to realize, I said, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this to my friend Joe. It became the song Triage. When I got home, I picked up an instrument and started to put it together, and the song started to tell me what it wanted to be. That was the beginning. A tumbling effect started to happen with the songs. And I started to realize that the real potency is a good word. The, the potency or the longing that comes to me in the form of potency was like, I really wanted to express something about the times I was living in without preaching. You know, I want to say something, but I don't want to put these songs out there in a way that I think I know anything more than anybody else. I'm just intuiting how to live the way everybody else is, and I was born to be a songwriter, so I express myself this way. Once you kind of settled into the quarantine and that kind of headspace, I know that the record started changing a lot. How did you kind of approach these songs with the extra time of being home alone? Extra time in record making is, is such a good thing, especially for me. So when the pandemic set in, you know, when we really knew what was up and, and we shut down, you know, production, it allowed me to really go back and say, hmm, here, I'm not really doing what I set out to do. Elbowed those out, wrote some more songs, and I uh, realized how much revision is part of really good writing. I asked a friend of mine once who teaches poetry at Syracuse, and I said, so what's the biggest mistake that your graduate students make? And she says, oh, that's easy, falling in love with what they've written. And I'll tell you this, you know, I had fallen in love with some things I'd written. And given time, it's almost like, a, you know, a new romance that's not gonna work. You know, give it a little time and it'll it'll show you that it's not going to work. And that's so insightful too, and, and to be able to have that level of um, openness with yourself and your own process. I do want to ask a bit about the actual recording process. Well, it began with my son-in-law, who is my co-producer, and there's no nepotism involved because he comes out of the Clive Davis School of Record Production in NYU, and he knows a lot more than me. And he's a worthy adversary. You know, he may be married to my youngest daughter, but he stands up to me <laughs> and tells me when he doesn't follow what I'm trying to get at. And I called up Stuart Smith, the guitar player, who's my old pal and one of my dearest friends who now is their long-standing lead guitar player with the Eagles. But we go way back. And then I bring up Larry Klein, bass player out in California, producer. Stuart's a producer as well and John Jarvis, piano player, and Jerry Rowe, this really lovely feeling drummer. And we get in the studio and we start recording triage, you know, the, the lead track. And, and then something happens in the arrangement, it sort of falls into this thing that goes from Stuart's guitar thing that he's playing that I hadn't heard him play before that inspired John Jarvis to play this, this piano solo that when, you know, I'm under the headphones trying to keep my part to go and sing and and, and it, you know it just took me out of singing and said yeah that that you know mark that a take and that part of the re recording process is what we look for is you know when we can all get into a tune and then get unconscious with it and let the tune speak through this combination of musicians that's so cool and it's so cool to hear too just the power of musicians in a room and a good band and how serving a song can really lead to augmenting that song. 
in yeah. a lot of ways. So especially in a time now where you have so much like bedroom pop and people winning Grammys from just their laptops. It's, 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 it's amazing to see how different of an energy having that band. That's a new one to me. I haven't heard bedroom pop. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, COVID has, I, I wasn't in my bedroom, but I was back in my home studio with a little eight track digital recorder with just me where I was banging on windows to see if it sounded like drums and recording that. So I, I recorded about 30 songs where I played everything. That might get a kick drum sound right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's great. Are you going to do anything with those like demos or like someday? We'll I don't know. Like you a... know, I, I would like to think I'm brave enough to release something like that. The Rodney Crow bedroom pop. My record. bedroom pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rodney, for taking some time out of your day and speaking with us. Thank you, Joe. Rodney Crowell's new record, Triage, is out on July 23rd. For American Songwriter, I'm Joe Vito. Thank you so much for tuning in.